So suppose I have a matrix A here, and I want to do a QR decomposition of it using this time the Gibbons rotation. So um, what I want in the end is this upper triangle matrix R, okay, which has zeros below the diagonal, and uh, above the diagonal. The, above the diagonal, you can have zero, but it's you don't have to have zero. You don't need to have zero, okay. So here it's denoted by these uh, strange x's, okay? So they can be of course zero, but you don't need to have them to be zero, okay? But below the diagonal you have zero, okay? Um, so to use the given rotation, uh, basically we will each time apply several rotations to each column vector of the matrix, okay? Um, by the first column vector of A, we will apply n minus one uh, rotation, okay? N being the dimension of the matrix, okay? N, uh, a, is n by n, a is an n by n matrix, okay? But the first column vector of A, I will apply n minus 1 rotations, because the first element of the vector will stay non zero. Um, by the second column vector, I will apply, apply n minus 2 rotations, okay? Because the first and the second element will stay non zero, okay, as here. Um, and by the first one, I will apply n minus 3 rotations, the three uh, top elements staying non-zero, basically, and so on, okay, and by the last column vector I will apply no rotation at all, okay, because all elements stay non-zero. Yes, and uh, the geometric meaning of that is simply, um, well, suppose you are in three dimensions, but you can of course extend that to as many dimensions as you want. Um, basically, if you want to kill, basically, uh, the y and z component of this uh, three-dimensional vector, vector here. First, what we will do is rotate um, such that the y component becomes zero, and then we will rotate such that in such a way that the z component becomes zero. Okay. So I have my vector here. Uh, it's in the three dimensions. First, I will rotate it so, such that it now lies in the x z plane. Okay. So that the y component is zero, and then I will rotate a second time. Um, so that uh, the vector now lies entirely on the x-axis, okay, so that the uh, y and z component are both zero, okay. And again, we can not visualize that in more than three dimensions, but it, basically you do the same thing. Yes, so it's just rotations, rotations that you apply to your, the column vectors of your matrix. Uh, now, to apply, to find this given matrix, we need to find our cosine and our sine, defined by the letters C and S, okay? I hope you see the abbreviation. Um, so, cosine is defined by the top element of the vector in which lies the element you want to kill, okay? The top element of this vector over the hypotenuse, and sine is defined as the element you want to eliminate, so uh, basically, let's call it kill over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is simply the square root of the, the top element of this vector squared and the element you want to eliminate squared, okay? Um, yes, so that's how we uh, set up our rotation matrix coefficients, basically. Also, notice that we don't really need the angle, okay? Sorry, we don't... Uh, we don't really need an angle, okay? Uh, generally, generally we say cosine of an angle or sine of an angle, but here to apply the given rotation, we don't really need to find the angle to define our cosine and our sine, okay? We just define cosine as being the top over the hypotenuse and sine being the element you want to kill over the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse being the square root of this top element squared and the element you want to kill squared, okay? That's very important. Um, uh, so, for example, if you are again in three dimensions, and that first you want to kill the y component of this uh, vector, okay? Um, so, uh, what you want to do basically is first you have our vector here, and now we want to rotate it in such a way that it now lies in the xz plane, okay? Um, so, to find my c, my c um, is defined as the top of our t hypotenuse, and um, Basically, these two formulas here, they come from the fact that uh, at the beginning we define, uh, at the very beginning, we define generally cosine as being the adjacent of our t hypotenuse and sine as being the 
opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, that's that just comes from that. This this formula should not be alien to you. Okay, um, and basically our adjacent is the top element of the vector. Okay, so this one, and the opposite is the element you want to kill. Okay, so in this case, this one. After we will apply it to the to the C component, the uh, adjacent will still be the top element, but the opposite would be the C component. Okay, very important. So um, as said, if we want to kill the Y component, the um, um, the adjacent would be the X component, so the um, the first component of the vector. And the Y component that we would like to kill, it would be the opposite. So it would be this component here. So we were to rotate it and now our vector lies in the XC plane. And now we want to kill the C component. So the C component will be the opposite. So this component here, okay, I hope you can see it. This line here will be the opposite and the adjacent will still be the X component. Okay, so this line here. Okay, and now our vector lies in the on the x-axis, and so it has only one non-zero component, and that's what you wanted. Okay, that's basically that's a bit uh, to visualize what you are doing. We are only simply rotating a uh, given amount of time uh, of time, uh, so that at the end we only have one non-zero component in our vector. Okay. Uh, yes. So uh, where do you put your cosine and your sine in? The matrix. Uh, well, um, the first cosine you put it in the um, ith uh, row and ith column position. So i being the row of the element you want to kill. Okay. So here, for example, the if you first kill the y component, the row is two, and then uh, if you kill the c component, the row is three. Okay. So i is simply the row of the uh, element that you want to kill and J is simply the column of the element you want to kill okay so uh, here uh, we only have one vector so J is always one but for example here in this matrix um, if uh, we want to kill the uh, second component of the first column vector J is one but if you want to kill the third component of the second column vector okay because we only want to kill below the diagonal okay well, basically it would be this uh, component here, J would be uh, J would be two, okay. And then, uh, if you want to kill the fourth component of the third column vector, J would be three, okay. Uh, yes. So your first cosine you put it in the i row and i column. Your second cosine you put it in the j row and j column, okay. Uh, you put a negative sign, okay, so you simply take the negative of uh, your your um, your sign here. Uh, you put it in the ith row and jth column. Uh, if you notice here, this is simply the place of the element you want to kill, okay? Because i, as defined, is the row and j is the column. So basically, as a shortcut, you can remember that you always put the negative sign in the place of the element you want to eliminate, okay? So um, yes, uh, if we want to kill the the second component of a first column vector, the negative sign would be in this place here. Okay, in the Kevin's matrix that you will define later. Um, yes. Okay. If we want to kill the third component of the first column vector, the negative sign will be in the place of this element. Okay. And uh, the second sign, it's in the J row and i column, so basically you just switch, okay, but this time it's positive, okay, uh, you have one negative sign and one positive sign, but you have two positive cosines, okay. Um, also notice that uh, your cosine should generally lie in the diagonal of your matrix, because as I said, uh, they are in the i row i column, respectively j row j column, so they should lie in the diagonal of your Kevin's matrix. We call our Kevin's matrix in any uh, 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 G, uh, J, uh, G, I, I hope I pronounce it right, uh, this letter here. Uh, yes. Um, and then once you've set up your two cosines in the diagonal, the diagonal, the minus sign in the place of the element you want to kill and the sign in the J throw i column, 
um, you fill in the rest of the matrix with zeros except on the diagonal where you put ones, okay? You put ones in the diagonal and zero elsewhere. Of course, if a cosine also already lies in the diagonal, you won't replace it with the one, okay? Very important. But if there is no cosine in the diagonal, you put a one, okay? Ones in the diagonal, zero elsewhere, uh, except uh, uh, if the cosine is already in the diagonal, you don't put a one on this place, okay? Then you apply your matrix, uh, your given matrix to A, okay? So K1. And uh, then the second component of our first column vector is zero, as expected. Then you would need to apply several given rotations, each time uh, killing one element uh, until the first column vector has only one non-zero element, okay? You would continue in such a way uh, by using the formula we defined here uh, and here. Okay, just find your cosine and your sine, you put it in your matrix uh, and then you apply it to A. Each time you will kill one of the elements of the column vector uh, that you consider in your matrix, okay? Once you have applied several given rotations such that the, the, the first column vector has a set only one non-zero component, which should, which should be the first element, okay? Uh, you will begin to consider your second column vector. And this time, it's really important that you only consider, you basically you only consider this uh, submatrix, okay, here in orange, okay. You only consider the submatrix. Everything stays the same, but the top element of the vector of the second column vector will basically be the top element of the vector inside the submatrix. So this one here, okay. The top is the top inside the submatrix. So you still use your same formulas, but what changes is the top is not defined as the top element of the entire column vector, uh, but the top element of the vector that is inside the submatrix, okay? But uh, everything else is the same, okay? Kill is still, kill is still the, um, the element you want to eliminate, but top is the top element of the vector that is inside the submatrix, okay? Uh, you consider this uh, n minus 1 by n minus 1 submatrix, and then if you consider the third column vector of A, you will consider this n minus 2 by n minus 2 submatrix, and then and so on until you uh, find, you consider your uh, 2 by 2 submatrix, which, in which you will apply one last rotation, okay? You want still to eliminate the, um, the element 2, 1, okay, this one, you still want to kill it. But once you have reached your 2x2 two two submatrix, I said you apply one last rotation to this element here. Um, and once you have killed it, you are finished, okay? But again, I said you everything else is the same. You, uh, your cosine and sine and st are still in the same places, okay? Uh, where you use the row and the column of the element you want to kill to place your cosine and your sine. You still put ones in the diagonal and zero elsewhere. Uh, but wait. Yes, what only changes, changes is this uh, top element that is now the first element of the vector inside the submatrix. So each time basically you consider a submatrix. So by the first column vector of A, you consider the entire matrix, but by the second column vector of A, you consider the n minus 1 by n minus 1 submatrix. By the third column vector, you consider the n minus 2 by n minus 2 submatrix until you reach. Uh, two by two submatrix in which you apply one last rotation and then you have found your upper triangle matrix you should have found it uh, yes that's it uh, so to finish remember that a is equal to qr at the end so we have done our qr thing opposition and that q transpose a is equal to r because q is orthogonal so it's inverse is it transpose so given that uh, if we apply uh, all our given rotations to A, we should get our upper triangle matrix, okay? If we apply all, all our given rotations. So we should get our upper triangle matrix R. But you also know that Q transpose A is equal to R. So that implies Q transpose is equal to uh, all our given rotations applied to A, okay? And so that Q is equal to... Uh, this whole thing here transpose, okay? Um, 
Okay, Q is all those Givens rotations transpose. Okay, the product of all those Givens rotations transpose. So you can find your Q by doing that. Okay, you you are your upper triangle matrix. You already get it at the end once you have applied all your Givens rotations, and your Q you find it by uh, taking the transpose of the product of all those Givens rotations that you applied to A. Okay, and one last thing. Um, I've already done some videos about the Hausdorff transformations. Uh, I think you have noticed at this point that it takes much longer with the given rotation than with the Hausdorff transformation to do a QRT composition of a matrix. Uh, why? Well, simply because with the Hausdorff transformation, you consider each column of each column vector of A of your matrix once, um, and then you apply your reflection. And then all elements except the first one are zero with the, with the household transformation. But with the given rotation, you need to kill each element of your column vector separately. Okay? So if your um, column vector has n elements, you need to apply n minus 1 rotations. Uh, but with the household transformations, you need to only apply one reflection. Okay? So the given rotation can be really, really complicated, especially if you do it by hand on higher than 3x3 three three matrices, okay? Because you need way more time and computation, of course, uh, to find your QRT composition of your matrix with given rotation, because, as I said, you consider each time each element. You need to kill each element separately, and that can become really messy really quickly. So uh, notice that, so if you have the choice, uh, especially if you need to do it by hand, uh, between the if you have the if you have the choice between the householder matrix and the given rotation method, okay, uh, it would be better to choose the householder because you are much faster. Yes, uh, so that's it. I think we are finished. Uh, so just to summarize, if you want to do a QRT composition of your matrix, let me maybe change color. Um, if you want to do a QRT composition with your matrix with uh, the given rotation. So at the end, you want to have your upper triangle matrix with uh, zeros below the, di di below the diagonal. So of course, above the diagonal, you can have a zero element, but you don't need to put it to zero. But below the diagonal, you should have zeros, only zeros. So to do that, to do that with the given rotation, you rotate each column vector of A a given amount of time, so that each time you kill one of its elements, and you kill it basically, um, um, as we uh, saw before, you kill it by rotating your vector in a plane. Okay. So if you are in three dimensions, you rotate it in such a way that uh, the, uh, your three-dimensional vector now lies in the xz plane. So the y component is zero. Then you rotate it, you rotate it a second time, such that now it lies entirely on the x-axis. So the x, uh, so the z and y component are zero. Sorry, not the x component. Yes. And uh, to find your given matrix, you need to find your uh, cosine and your sine, which are defined by the top over the hypotenuse and the kill, uh, the element we, we want to kill over the hypotenuse. The top element is the first component of the column vector in which lies your uh, element you want to kill. But if remember that if you consider a submatrix, the top element is the top element inside the submatrix. Okay. But the kill element uh, is always the element you want to kill. And the hypotenuse is the square root of uh, this top element squared and uh, this kill element squared. And remember again that we don't really need to find the angle. Okay, Generally we say cosine of an angle or sine of an angle, but here to use the given rotation we don't really need it. And I said what you are simply doing is applying rotations to um, our matrix A, to the column vectors of our matrix A. And also remember that there's those formulas here for cosine and sine, they don't come out from nothing. They come out from the fact that at the very beginning, if we consider a triangle, we define cosine uh, of being the adjacent over the hypotenuse and sine of being the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, so the adjacent is simply here the top element, um, and uh, the opposite is the element you want to kill of our column vector. Okay? And where do you put your cosine and your sine into your matrix? Uh, you cosine, you put it in the diagonal, 
uh, your first cosine is in, the, is in the ice row, ice column, I being the row of the element you want to kill, and uh, your second cosine you put it in the chase, row, chase, column, J being the column of the, um, the element you want to kill. Your negative sign, you have a negative sign and a positive sign, but you have two positive cosines. Your negative sign, you put it in the place of the element you want to kill, you can use it as a shortcut, or otherwise, you put it in the I throw chase column. But as said, uh, this is simply the place of the element you want to kill. Your positive sign, you put it, uh, you switch the J and the I, you put it in the chase throw ice column. Okay, so, um, yeah, in the chase throw ice column. Uh, and then you set up your given's rotation matrix. As said, you put your cosine and your sine and your negative sign into your matrix. You fill in the rest of the matrix with zeros, okay, zeros, except on the diagonal where you put ones. Okay, you put one in the diagonal and zero elsewhere. But of course, if you have already a cosine in the diagonal, you won't replace it with the one, okay? You will uh, keep your cosine. But uh, well, if you don't have a cosine in the diagonal, you will put a one, okay? Very important. And then you apply all your given rotations to A, okay? Each time you repeat your formula by finding your cosine and your sine, and then you build your given matrix. Uh, and as said, once you are finished with your first column vector, you will only consider the first, uh, the, you will only consider a sub-matrix of your matrix A, okay? Uh, and then a sub-sub-matrix until you reach a two by two sub-matrix in which you will apply your given sortation one last time, okay, to kill basically the element two, one of your uh, two by two submatrix, okay. But that's it. But what you need to remember with the submatrix is that the what only changes is that the top element is the top element of the column vector inside the submatrix. Everything else is the same. You still use the same formulas to uh, proceed. Um, and um, yeah, as said. Uh, you, your upper triangle matrix, you get it after you have applied all your given rotations to the matrix A. And so remembering that Q transpose A is equal to R, you know that um, Q transpose is equal to uh, all those given rotations applied to A. So to find Q, simply find the transpose of, those of the product of those given rotations. Okay? And that said also, you need much longer with the given rotation than with the household transformation. Of course, if you are if you are in two if you have a two by two matrix, it's the same because you only kill one element. But otherwise, you need longer with the given rotation. So if you are in an exam, I would uh, uh, advise you to use the household transformation instead of the given rotation if you have the choice. Okay. So yeah. So as I said, those are simply rotations. Basically, we consider each column vector of A and we apply a given amount of rotations to it. Um, to yeah to kill a given amount of element so that at the end we have our upper triangle matrix. That's all we are doing. We are rotating. Okay. Uh, and I said the um, uh, cosine and the sine formula are not alien. They come simply from the fact that at the beginning, if you have a triangle, we define cosine as being the adjacent of the hypotenuse and sine as being the opposite or the hypotenuse. So those formulas should not be alien to you, okay? So we are simply rotating, uh, that's the point of the given rotation, okay? So I hope I forgot nothing, I hope it was clear, and uh, yes, thanks for watching.